All right, if that clip doesn't do it, what you're about to see is going to do it. The ladies themselves, <laughs> Cynthia, Ariana, good to see you, too. Good, good to see, see you. you. How are you feeling? Good, really good. good. Thank you for asking. I remember the first time I saw both of you on your socials share the moment you found out you got the part. <laughs> I melted, as did every hyper fan of this product in this universe. <laughs> well, now you're about to be on the other side of that journey. Yeah. How does it feel? R like wild. This has been a really wonderful, crazy, wild journey. We're deeply, deeply grateful yeah. to, to be here, to, to have been able to do this, yeah. Just deep gratitude. Mm -mm. We really are, we're almost over the rainbow. It's so crazy. For part one. For part one. For part one, yes. exactly. We'll get to part two in a moment, but for this, you thought you knew what these sets were gonna be like. Mm -hmm. Neither of you are strangers to big production value. Mm -hmm. Even still, when you walked out, what was the moment you saw? What blew you away? What's the first thing? Oh my gosh. Was the first thing we saw were, was our dorm room. Our dorm room. That was very special. Yeah, but intimate. Intimate, yeah. Uh, but even there, like every single detail, detail the books were all written in mm -hmm. in our characters' point of view. Like yeah. every single picture had a picture in it. Every yeah. frame and every you know piece. Yeah, was, everyone was. It was all picked for us. All the, the set designers and and the prop masters really put paid great attention to what these women would need in their spaces. Uh, and it was, it meant it a was great deal. It was so thoughtful. And then you move out to Shiz and it's just huge. Huge. Uh, and there's a running moat with water in it. And there's, a, you know, a stairway up into the, the very top of, of Shiz. It just was insane to see. And I always joke that it looked like Venice. Right. Like summer in Venice. Because it, that's what it felt like. There was always sunshine in this place. There's so much work went into creating this world, yeah. Yeah. And then you have to sink in, yes. breathe, get over it, perform, yeah. and act. Once you're in that space, on top of that, you're recording the music practically yes. on the day. Yeah. Uh, Dijetic sound, we're hearing yeah. that performance. Despite all your live work, what kind of pressure is it knowing that this is going to stick? I, Go on, you, no, you take I, it I, Well, I think it, it didn't really feel like pressure for mm -hmm. us at that point. Mm -hmm. It felt like just what these women needed to do yeah. was sing, and um, we, we were very excited about the live right. the live singing aspect of it. And our sound department was, was Intimate. so incredible. So yeah. when you're watching it, it sounds like, it looks like a professional recording, but it's because they had mics in her hat, in my blouse, in above us, around us. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> you know. turned the set into essentially a recording studio. Truly. So you could hear the sound from anywhere. And it makes the difference. All right, we got to wrap it up. So next, I'm talking to the director, John Chu. Yes. Give me something about him. In a word, your director. We love him In so a much. word? In a word, perfect. Yes. He's Good word. Oh, perfect. Right. Divine. Have Divine. you ever met a perfect director? Thank you so much, ladies. <laughs> Coming up next, you're going to meet the aforementioned perfect director. And we're going inside the dorm room they just talked about. I am so geeked out. All things wicked, next. Okay. Welcome back to Take a Look, our half hour dedicated to all things wicked. It's Jonathan Bailey, Jeff Goldblum. How are you? Listen we are to that great. voice. Listen to that voice. You don't hear that voice. You feel that voice. <laughs> I'm trying to talk over the music. That could be, you, you could do that. You could play that part of the guy who used to um, announce for fights. You know, let's get ready to rumba. You know, that's what you just I think did. That's trademarked. We have to pay that guy now. Okay. Well, sorry. I'll <laughs> if I have to contribute anything. But right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, good to see you too. How are you feeling? Great. We're very happy to be here. Ask us how do I feel how, now that we're cozy and playing. If we were a bell, if we were a salad, we'd be tossing our dressing. And then some. What musical I, is that from? Quick. I I can't pull. Guys and Dolls. Guys and Dolls. I saw you in that you every see performance. Guy, so. Reach for stars in the sky. So, go on. I'm I, doing it for some. Dog. I've got to stick to this. So let's talk about what's the song that 20 years from now you don't know why, but the song from this is going to pop up in your head and loop forever. I you. am a sentimental man. That's my song. I don't know about that. Well, his song, <laughs> I dance up through life. I am, I'm going to, to, or no, I think I'm mixing it up with America, Great American Hero. I'm floating on air. I said, believe it or not, I'm floating on air. Hey, I saw William Cat who starred in that show, yeah. do the original Pippin. Oh, wow. And guess who wrote Pippin? I'm getting chills. Stephen Schwartz. Schwartz. Going okay. full He had magic circle. to do, and he did it. Right. Wait, what? He had magic to do, and he did it. Oh, <laughs> he's got magic to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Laurence Olivier once said that a oh, part like of this already will be a part of him forever. And, you know, for the God's sake, you've won his award. 
what part of this role will be with you forever? Well, much like the lyrics in For Good, which is a song in the second act, uh, which is one of my favourite songs in Wicked, um, I, I think just the experience of, I think it's been a full circle moment coming back to work with people on music and dance and just seeing everyone uh, expertly coming together and uh, the amount of coaching that we've had. And I think that's going to stay with me forever, obviously, but also the shared mm -hmm. moments of um, sort of, magic that um, I witnessed sure. on set and with the girls and with Jeff and, and, and you. I like rehearsals too. You know, you, all, you heard like when, about Judy Garland, for instance, that they would, you know, their lives at MGM, that they would be in the rehearsal studio, as you, you see on film. They must have practiced that. But, ga, 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 you know, they learned how to, they taught them how to sing, how to yeah, dance. Yeah. You know, we experienced a little bit of this, got some last minute, you know, training and uh, spe co special coaching for at least me for my song. I, li I like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We have to wrap it up. So in a nutshell, see Wicked because... Jonathan Bailey. Jonathan <laughs> Bailey. And... And... and uh, the, <laughs> I, for uh, 10,000 reasons, I can't... It's a cinematic event for the whole family, and it will blow your mind. And I think it's a very rare thing to see a film that you know you're going to be watching in 50 years' time. Yeah, you know that song, Find 100 Ways. That's my answer to that. You know that song, kind of an R&B R &B song? Find 100 Ways. Oh, I love that song. I could stay here forever. We need another 24 hours from this. Uh, but coming up on our half-hour special of All Things Wicked, more of the cast and crew. We will leave no munchkin behind. We'll be right back. So for you, if there was anything the wizard could give you that you found out at the end of the day you already had all along, what would that one thing be in regards to making this movie? I would say um, the heart and the emotion of what I felt when I first saw it on stage. I would hope that this movie uh, gives wonder and curiosity um, to some kid out there. And um, I would hope that that would be in this movie. You're no stranger to big sets. Like you are probably the preeminent person that's doing it practically on yes. the day. With that said, is there a particular moment where you went back to childhood and said, oh my gosh, I wish the eight-year-old me could see this? I mean, every day was like that. I walked onto Munchkin Land, and you can, you're on the, the yellow brick road, and you can't believe that this is your yellow brick road. And you see Galinda and her bubble on the thing, and there's hundreds and hundreds of extras. You can walk into any building there. Emerald City, walking down. We have a 60-ton train that we actually have that runs on a track, and you're walking in, and everyone's, we had tall, we had like seven foot seven people. We had three foot three people. Like, it was like this beautiful a collection of, of people and uh, the life and the ambition of Emerald City with cobblestones and dancers. I mean, it was unlike anything I had ever been a part of before. I mean, you will pay off beautifully you know people lean into the musical largely because they love the whiz or they love the wizard of oz or they love the books even yeah so you have all these different fans coming they all want to be pleased oh yeah how do you please them all and also get the john vision in there <laughs> uh you can't please them all but um i knew what i felt like when i watched wicked for the first time before it went on to broadway i saw it with my mom in san francisco when they were workshopping it and I remember being blown away by it. I remember what it felt like to be reminded of, oh wait, that's from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's so clever. Oh, that's a... And I remember what it felt like to see those two girls, Alpha and Galinda, and fall in love with that relationship. And so I knew that if I could protect those things and use the tools of cinema to expand the rest, then we would have something really interesting here. And you mentioned Alpha and Galinda. It starts with them. Casting is key. Yep. Um, how excited were you? Well, I mean, because I've just asked your two actresses, who, by the way, say you are the perfect director. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, how excited were you conversely? Like, what would your social media have looked like had you posted the moment you locked them? <laughs> um, I'm really glad we found each other. We couldn't have made this movie without the two of them. We wouldn't have made this movie if you couldn't find those two. Like, very specifically, at this moment, Cynthia speaks... Uh, a soul into Elphaba's words that we've heard so many times that's, that, that makes this a necessity right now. And Galinda speaks her words, even through the, uh, um, the Ariana Grande persona, this most popular girl in the world, that she's finding her, a new way of herself in this movie, even the way she uh, uh, puts her name at the end of the movie in, and, and changing her name, actually, in it, um, as uh, Ariana Grande Butera. Like, to me, she's a new person in that, and... That, that's a hard thing, transition and change. And those two representing that to me is, is so magical and is what the movie is actually about in, within their relationship. And so I'm excited for people to see that. And so forgetting scenes, because they're all brilliant, if there were one screen grab that represents the moment in time in this movie where it exceeded your expectations. Exceeded the expectations? 
I mean, it's a simple one. It's not like a big flashy moment. It's the moment she puts on the cape on her and there's the perfect circle, but there's the cracks in the windows. So the O's and the Z's and what, what Alphaba does in Oz is bring these cracks and sharp angles. And it's the two ladies and there's the broomstick in between. And she's like, come with me. And the only, and, and Glinda can't go with her and she can't say that she's not going with her. Um, and that moment, the look between the two when they realize that they're gonna not be together is heartbreaking for me and is what the, we built this whole movie around. It's all about heart. Hey, welcome back to Take a Look, our half hour special dedicated to all things Wicked and over because we got these guys, Ethan, Marissa, so excited to be with you and kind of sad too because it's the tail end of our half hour special so it's about to be over. Pardon me, I promised Cheers. I wasn't going to cry. It's Where's been a really to? beautiful half hour. It's been... Th thanks for noticing. <laughs> yeah. All right, for those who don't know and let's pretend there's anyone who doesn't, introduce yourselves. I am Marissa Bodhi and I... I'm Marissa Vodi. <laughs> and I'm Ethan Slater. Got it. Let's talk about the journey. The moment you found out you made it to the moment we're talking right now, in a nutshell. I, the process was me, for me, was over the span of a few weeks, but that final call was, I, I was told it was a callback, but it was actually them telling me that I got the part in the most special way. John pretended like he was going to the door to just answer whoever, and it was actually Ari and Cynthia at the door over Zoom, but at the door with the sign that said, welcome to Oz, will you be our Nessa Rose, which was just so thoughtful and so special. And the part of auditioning, you send out self-tapes, you assume they're going out, you hope weeks later you'll find out, but you got a call back like that day. Yeah, I did get a, which was wild. I actually got several calls before I actually <laughs> ended up picking up because I was at work and we were understaffed at that point in time. Um, but yeah, when I finally did pick up, I was so excited. I wanted to immediately call my dad, but again, I was on the clock, so I waited. <laughs> I waited later, but probably some of the best news I've ever had in my entire life. Awesome. Ethan, the road from SpongeBob to the Yellow Brick Road. Yeah. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 was, I did Spongebob seven years ago now, which is really um, dark. But we, we're, I worked on it for a long time, just dark because it's been a long time. I can't believe how long it's been since we started that. But um, I, I don't know, that, that was an amazing experience, working on Spongebob and getting to work on Broadway. I love Broadway so much, and it's been a real like joy and kind of an honor to be able to take a Broadway show like Wicked and put it on screen and, and dive into the characters in a new kind of way. Um, it's a totally different thing to tell a story every night, eight shows a week, versus taking one little moment, you know, particularly between Buck and Nessa, and just figuring out exactly how to, how to like, tell this really nuanced little story between them. And it's been amazing. Absolutely, so many nuanced stories, but such an epic adventure at the same time. And speaking to that epic adventure, what I loved about the original cinematically in this, so practical. So mm -hmm. talk about what you felt that very first day on the first big set. I felt, I felt ready to go because it was so immersive. And it genuinely, because the first thing that uh, I filmed, and I think we both really filmed, yeah. was the classroom scene with Dr. Dilliman and just seeing all the other actors in their uniforms, it really did feel like, class in the first day of college and it was just it was like almost a loop in time for me going back to the first day of college um, and it felt very special and magical and whimsical how about you I, it was being transported to Oz it was really um, surreal and also made it really easy to play you know everybody was on set in our shiz uniforms that first day we really felt like new students at a new school um, yeah, it was it was amazing, and I and I and I love watching it back on screen and seeing how the like sort of tactile set really comes through. It does come through. It is epic, amazing. So blessed to hang out with you. Hey, let's wrap it up with a clip. You want to? Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, just look over there. Do the magic. Say, take a look. Hey, take, take a, a look. look.